What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 376th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. It is Thursday, December 6, 2018. We are presented in part by 1821manmade.com, your one-stop shop for all of your beard grooming needs. They are not a bargain brand beard balm company that wants just any man to buy their products. They want men who take their facial grooming seriously. So go to 1821manmade.com and step up your beard game. We are also brought to you by Happy Hippo Herbals, home of the highest grade and purest kratom on the planet. Happy Hippo Kratom will elevate your mood. It'll make you fearless around women and give you a relaxed energy that only the purest kratom can provide. Uh, today, I actually took before the show, I took Happy Hippo One, which is a medium strain. Um, again, again, this is the one that gives you that relaxed energy. It is my personal favorite. It's the first one that I ever took. Um, listen, one might even <laughs> one might even uh, liken it to trying, you know, an illicit drug for the very first time. Like that's the kind you like. I don't know, chasing the dragon. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> listen, I don't need to cocaine, right? <laughs> right. HappyHippoHerbals.com today and save twenty percent when you pay with Bitcoin. And yes, that includes your shipping. That is HappyHippoHerbals.com. All right, let's get to it, guys. My guest tonight, of course, uh, is the founder of ByKevinSamuels.com. He is one of the internet's most prevalent image consultants. He's been on television. He's been in magazines. Uh, definitely the best dressed guest that I've ever had. He, of course, is Kevin Samuels. Kevin, how you doing this evening? I am well, brother. How are you? Shout out to all the uh, fans out there. What's going on, guys? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm doing great. And guys, if you want to get in on the conversation, if you if you want to call us, all right, the number is 914-205-5356. Again, that's 914-205-5356. If you have a question for Kevin, this is if you have a question about game or girls or whatever, this is not the show for that. But but keep keep stay on topic. Let, let's keep it style related. Black Libertarian wants to know, is the brother pill going to be on tonight? Yes. Yes, the Brother Pill is definitely going to be on tonight. Uh, we're actually going to be on the air right around 7.15, 7.30. But for now, we're going to do TSR Live. So, Kevin, the, 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 the reason for the show tonight is I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. Right? Like, I've got my opinion on this. And so I'll ask you first. Okay. Should, men dressed, should men dress to impress women? Um. In honor of what we just talked about, as we are getting into next level stuff, the guys who follow you should know you well enough to understand where this answer is going. Yes, men shouldn't dress to impress women. Men should dress to impress everyone. Okay. And let me tell you why. Because we are the world is competitive. In seven seconds, people decide whether or not you're in a, to a yes or no category. It happens before you can blink an eye. It's hardwired into our brain. You can't overcome it. Well, you can overcome it if you want to put a lot of time and energy and effort. A smart man dresses to impress everyone to get to command respect and authority for men and to be admired and longed for by women. Now, that does not mean that is your sole purpose, but it does mean it's part of your purpose. Um, what I want people to think of is I want people to think, look at people put Idris Elba is the most the sexiest man in the world. And on the cover, he is in a T-shirt, jeans, and a cardigan. Take Idris Elba, who became synonymous with everything chocolate and sexy when he played Stringer Bell on The Wire. <laughs> and I want you to take the guy everyone knows, David Beckham. Yes. Simple, classic, masculine fashion. Neither one of these guys look try hard. But tell me a chick that wouldn't want to blow either one of these dudes. Right. Come on, guys. At the end of the day, my red pill guys need to start thinking of image as a goddamn tool to get what you want. You can cut down a tree with a butcher knife, a handsaw, an axe, but would you rather use a chainsaw? Right, right. That's what I want you to think of your image as, a chainsaw. Not some shit to where you got to be thinking about it and you got to go in your closet and like, well, how do I mix this and mix that? Matter of fact, I dropped the video today and I didn't even know Donald was going to ask me. The three F's that guys need to worry about. If you just get your footwear, your frames, and your fragrance right, any guy can have cool, kick-ass style without being try-hard and thinking about it. Let me finish it up with this. 
a masculine man's wardrobe needs about a hundred pieces. So okay. that's from shoes all the way through hats. Just 100 pieces. They're just massively interchangeable. Massively interchangeable and basically equates to a uniform. Guys need a uniform. You need a, let's say corporate guys, you need a city look and you need a country look. Okay. okay? You need a daytime, you need a business look, a casual look, and a weekend look. And those all are the same items, just mixed and matched in different ways. Okay. Um, listen, uh, very, very good intro. For whatever reason, Kevin, I can only see your icon when you talk. I don't know if your camera's on, if you're having, uh, if you're having camera issues. Okay. Let me, let me see what's going on here. Cause I you can see drop out and come back in. That's yeah, let, let me, let me do that. Cause I, I, I'm gonna come. I'll do that. I'm gonna come back. Okay. In. Very good. Uh, while, uh, while we're waiting for Kevin to come back in again, you guys are listening to TSR live with Donovan Sharp. This is the 376th edition of TSR Live with Donovan Sharp. If you guys have any questions for Kevin, if you have any fashion questions, if you have any image consulting questions, uh, give me a call, 914-205-5356. Uh, let me get to some of the chats here. Trav Hawkins pops the cherry tonight. Wizard Prang is in the house. Good to see you in here. Thaddeus Scott, good to see you in here. Miami J says the TSR that, that TSR uh logo shirt is badass actually it is a hoodie Devin like I was getting ready to I was actually getting ready to come on live and Devin comes in and and she gives me an early Christmas gift very very cool it's uh you know it's it's a hoodie with the uh with the TSR logo, of course, of course, designed by Miami J himself. Um, that was, this is, that's actually a pretty fucking cool gift, man. And this just goes to, that speaks to the importance of having a woman who is on your program, right? Like we all talk about, hey, you know, how do I vet a woman? How do you know she's a quality woman? This and that and the other. Okay, she's got to look good and cook good, just like you guys see here on the screen, right? Don't be a slut. Try not to have any discernible slut tells. Be nice. Be kind. Be attentive, et cetera, et cetera. But what really separates what really separates Devin from just about actually what really separates her from every woman that I've ever been with ever. And again, she's no snowflake. She's no unicorn. But what separates her is that she is on like she is ride or die. OK, she built my website. Uh, you know, she helps, she helps me, she helps me with my podcast behind the scenes. Um, you know, she puts links in and all this other kind of stuff. This is what she does for a living. She's a, she, she, like she makes a living doing, uh, doing internet marketing. And she has, she has helped me since day one. As a matter of fact, if I'm being completely honest, it's interesting. I was actually talking to Devin before I even had a podcast and I, I listen, I, I had kicked around the idea here and there, but I'd never really taken it seriously because I had a lot of other things going on. I was still in Vegas, living the, you know, living the fast, you know, living the Vegas fast life. But I remember I had a conversation with her. She said, you know what? You really should consider doing a podcast. And I was thinking to myself, nah, you know, whatever. And so finally, you know, one day I said, you know what? Let's do it. Started off as a weekly thing and it grew into what you see now. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Devin is the reason why I have a podcast. Whether I met her or not, I would probably still have a podcast at some point. Um, but I would not have made uh, I can I can unequivocally say that I would not have made the progress uh, that I've made as quickly as I have made it without her help. Would I get to this point without her? Of course, it probably would have taken me a lot longer if I'm being 100 percent honest. And of course, you know, her buying me, uh, you know, her getting me the TSR uh, logo, um, uh, you know, hoodie uh, that listen, that's just a, that, that's just a mark that that's just a that just, you know, that speaks to her support of, of my show, you know. And so, um, you know, again, we always talk about, hey, you know, how do I know she's a good woman? How do I know I can trust her? What makes a good relationship, et cetera, et cetera. There are many, many answers to that. But if you get a woman who is ride or die when she is on your mission, when she, when she supports your goals, man, that makes it that makes a difference. That makes a difference, dude. I've had women dress slutty for me, right? I've had women give me awesome sex. I've had women, you know, take me places. I've had women do this and that and the other. 
but I've never really had a woman who supports my mission. Again, that doesn't make her a snowflake or a unicorn, right? She could go feral at any time for any reason. I could decide I don't want to be with her. I'm not going to sit here and wax poetic about how she's some one in a million girl. You guys know how that is. But when you have a woman who who is ride or die for you, when she supports what you do, man, when she supports what you do, makes a big difference. Makes a very, very, very big difference. Um, Let's see here. Oh, Kevin wants me to send the link again. All right. Hang on, Kev. I'm going to get you in here. All right. Oops. Wait a minute. Hang on. Give me a second, Kevin. All right, let me just uh, just doing some show maintenance here, guys. All right, just give me just a second. Kevin and I actually had a very um, we had, we were this is actually why we're late coming on the air. We actually we uh, we had about a uh, a thirty minute uh, conversation. Uh, you know, Kevin Kevin is always very uh, always brings the wisdom. He's always very insightful you know, about these kinds of things. So I appreciate having him on. Um, I appreciate having him on uh, for these reasons. Definitely the dude, Kevin's as smart as they come, dude. All right. So Kevin, the link is on its way to you. All right. I sent it to your email, so it should be in there. I don't know if that's where you wanted me to send it, but I sent it to your email. All right. Um, Freelance Ernest says, I still need to try that Kratom. I got to get off that damn caffeine. Yeah, dude, cra- I, I actually yeah. wrote an article, I think, on uh, Negro Manosphere, um, how I beat, how I kicked the caffeine habit. I used to be addicted to caffeine, and Kratom was one of them <laughs> that um, that I kicked the caffeine habit. There he is. Uh, Kevin, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, for some reason, you're coming up as an unknown, maybe something going on. Do you, maybe you have a, a certain security on. Cause yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm being shadow banned. Who knows? No, I think it, it kept saying you were up out of my network and oh, anyway. it, I don't know why it does that. I, it, I have no idea. I think um, it's, a, it's part of, it's part of your settings. A lot of times because we like when we set up Google uh, plus yeah, Google plus settings, because of some, you may even have to un- uh, click um, accept calls from contacts. Oh, okay. Well, because uh, it's a privacy thing. Okay, cool. So to 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 continue on with what we were talking about, um, my answer to should men dress to impress women? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And a lot of a lot of people out there, a lot of I don't want to call them meathead red pill guys, but a lot of guys who try not to give the impression that everything they do is for women, they would say, well, you should never dress to impress a woman. You should dress to impress yourself or you should dress to impress everyone but women. And to that, I say, listen, I understand. I certainly understand the the sentiment there. You don't want to outwardly admit that you are doing something for to increase your to, to get the attention of women. But this is something that we do. This is something that we do as a as a it's 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 in our biological hard drive. When we leave the house, we want to look the best we can. Now we might not do it strictly for women. We might we might not make uh you know wardrobe choices. All right, what what wardrobe decision is going to make me the most attractive to women? But it's definitely a thought. It's definitely a part of the thought process. I was talking yesterday. Um, I think I was on with O'Shea yesterday on the Brother Pill podcast. I listen, I readily admit the reason I lift weights is so that I can stay sexually attractive to my girlfriend. Back in the day when I lifted weights, I did it to stay sexually attractive to women. Dude, guys lift weights to get laid. That's just all there is to it. Yeah, I like being stronger, I like being healthier, but the main reason we lift weights is to increase our reach in terms of our sexual market value. It's the same thing with the way you dress. Just because you dress well for not for the approval of women, but you're you're dressing well to you know you're dressing well so that you can be noticed by women there's nothing wrong with this well, and i think you hit the nail on the head dress to impress everyone okay and everyone includes women well i, I um uh, see let, let's just get real okay anytime somebody wants to give me pushback i say okay let's see check your body count against my body count <laughs> right you can't give me advice unless you can't tell me shit about what I do unless you're getting more bitches than I am. You fuck more and you're making more money and you and your circle is bigger than mine. Look, man, like it or not, before the world was civilized, the way men keep score and we keep score has always been 
How many bitches you bang? Pussy and money. That's right. Pussy and, pussy and resources. And guys who want to rock around and say, well, I don't want to get dressed. You are a fucking lame and you're basically justifying. You're looking, you're looking like a Cheeto beard dude. And <laughs> you, you think you're on this fucking, it's like reverse virtue signaling. I'm red pill. Red pill doesn't mean uh, that you're above the biological imperative. Dude, put some fucking clothes on and look like a grown goddamn man. See, yeah. it's better. I, I never know a man that's actually successful has an abundance mentality and a deep rotation that would argue this point. You know who would argue these points? Is these motherfucking philosophical people who want to argue the definition of is and they want to go, well, let's go look at what the dictionary says about, no, 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 no. That is not how we do it. In the real world, that shit doesn't work this way. And guys sitting online and all this mental masturbation about what should and should not happen. If you, me, and that guy and, and another guy, we all went out to a rock concert. Which of the four good fuck that night? I guarantee you'd be you and me. That's right. Because we know what the fuck we're doing and you don't. Yeah. Um, it's always interesting. And it's it's a thin line sometimes because I'm a listen, I've got a temper problem. It's documented. I'm a shoot first, ask questions later guy. And that's not most of the time. That's not a good thing because a lot of times and my guys in the chat will call me out on it. A lot of times someone will say something in the chat that I take to be adversarial when they were just when they're just pointing something out. Mm -hmm. I'm just an adversarial, you know, confrontational guy that listen, that is a frailty of mine. You know, I try to work on it. I'm not trying to offend my viewership, but this is just the way this is just the way that I am. But every once in a while, you can tell when someone's just outright just try, I mean, just trying to measure dicks. Mm -hmm. they're outright trying to tell you i know more than you we had a guy in the chat in the brother pill last night who was he was every every one of his comments were donovan's wrong and this is why blah was blah, 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 RB, blah, blah, blah. was it this rb network dude oh my god how the fuck did you know kevin because he did a show the other day talking about black youtube they won't let real men on the panel this is the fucking he's 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 trying to be i watched your show too I saw you call into the oh, because he's probably watching. I watched you call into the uh, brother pill and put a comment in, and O'Shea read and said, "This you won't allow any real men on the panel. Your show fucking sucks. The show sucks. The format sucks. You're not good at what you do, wow. and you cannot use trolling to try to build a name for yourself. If you want to get good, put in the fucking work. You don't know, cold troll people, and then think because they won't allow you to get on." That they're, they're not real. I, I don't like guys like this. I don't like people like this. And, and, and RB something network, RBR network, RBR network. And see, it's guys like this that want to sit around and troll the guys who know what the fuck's going on. Oh, and then, yeah. you know, people and bystanders, if you don't slap them down, they start to clutter them. They start to clutter. Uh, they start to clutter and make a lot of white noise. The manosphere is growing and we're going from beginners red pill is becoming a concept that's not a new concept that's not a novice concept and we are going in from the beginner to the intermediate to the advanced levels and a lot of the guys watch you they've been watching you for a while we know what we're talking about they're not beginners you know it's like having to re-explain hypergamy all over right virtual signaling having to explain shit tests just because your ass walked into the movie right now does not mean, you know, you walked in on episode two or episode three. We've already been down this path. You know the dressing is important. The, the real question is why. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm just on one because I know oh, no, it's all going, any, actually, of, these, any of these dudes that, that, that say this shit are, are, are tend to be. I mean, I'm like, you're not, they don't look like, I mean, you can't look like a fucking milk dud and tell me what the fuck to do about Yeah, This guy's a fucking loser, dude. This guy has something like 1200 videos. I don't know how many subscribers he's got, but he has videos. Cynthia G has 54,000 subs. She yeah. YouTube did that two days ago. 148 views. Look how long the video though was though. Yeah, dude, he was on the air for three hours, man. Yeah, and, I, and I tried to listen to him. I I, I study YouTube. Flex, not to, this guy. Real brother destroys Candace Owens. Oh, he's one of those fake ass pro black ass niggas, ain't he? No, what? What he really? 
Oh, we we had a term for guys like this when you came up. Look, guys, there's rank, and sometimes you're a loser. You this want to not be a loser? I can look at this guy. Go ahead, go ahead. My bad. Go ahead. If you want to not be a loser, you know he'd be better served instead of trying to tell everybody what's going to get your ass in the gym, lose some weight, learn how to actually get your social skills, get your EQ up, and learn how to get along with people. See, again, I don't know guys who are not successful in their chosen field who who are always so confrontational. Like when people call into the brother pill and try to troll you. Yeah, but you're fucking Devin every night. And like you you call them out. Look, you're mad because you want to fuck me or you want to be like me. And that's the truth. Right. You bitches call in because you would fuck a dude like Donovan. Donovan's just not fucking you. I can be real uh, cause I'm not, because now we're getting more mature. I'm in a place to where I know men understand what I'm saying. The thing is what really bothers guys the most here is how much of a priority should it be? And is it going to be, is it going to be something that's going to be a, a, an obsession? Guys don't want to go fucking shopping for purses and socks and shoes. You would rather be sitting around watching a ball game, talking about stats. This is not something guys want to do. So if you can make it simple and effective, why would a why would a smart, logical, red pill, pussy loving man not do it if it's going to increase his outcomes? Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm looking at this guy. I had no idea who this guy was until last night, and everything I said, this dude disagreed with. I don't have to watch or listen to this guy to know he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. This guy is a tryhard. Mm -hmm. Like he, like all he, all it's just confrontational radio. He runs, his, he runs off at the mouth for three hours a day. He's a fat guy, and he <laughs> fat guy, and, and he, he talks, talks like this. He's up in the microphone. I'm like, dude, you couldn't get pussy a pussy. Ain't you, what, uh, what are you gonna talk about? You, sir. you, me, and this guy go out to a to a to a club. No, that's never gonna happen, Kevin. Let's well, just say we were all work for the same company. We were forced. He would be he would be pussy repellent. He would be the guy who, look, no, you don't come tell men who know what the fuck to do, what to do. This is the problem with the internet. People who shouldn't be talking, talk. And then the guys who should be talking, you know, we sit here and try to be reasonable, but Donovan, you know what the fuck you're talking about. You are proven your bona fides is there. That would be like, why come troll you? Right, right, right. Well, no, here's the thing. I'll tell you exactly why. And there's a there, there was a guy on the internet for uh about six or seven months ago. His name was Steve Hoka. I don't mind saying that, dude. I don't mind saying the guy's name. I'll give him all the publicity he wants. The guy fucking blows. This guy, Steve Hoka, what he would do is anytime Rolo Tomasi made an appearance on YouTube, because of course we say, hey, you know, I'm talking about XYZ mm -hmm. with uh with Rolo Tomasi. Um, this guy would start a stream simultaneously right. and he'd think, yeah, you know, Rolo's talking about this and this is why he's wrong. He'd have like 20, he'd have like 20 or 25 guys watching and he would send people into this actually happened when I was on there. He would send people into, um, he would send people into my chat and say, yeah, you know, if you want to, uh, if you disagree with Rolo, come over to Steve Hoka. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So yes. you're trying to make your name. Anytime you try to make your name by besmirching or talking shit about other guys, it's not gonna it's it's not gonna happen um, unless you know what you're talking about, right? If listen, if you know your shit, then yeah, I mean, if you need if, if you need a little bit of flint to start the match, that's fine. But this guy, I can just look at this guy. Eventually, this guy, you're gonna have to make content. Yes, eventually, in there, and this is an old old tactic. And what I've learned is, you know. Better to shut these dudes down quickly because you bring nothing except confusion. And here's the thing. The manosphere is growing at a rate such that the separation is going to be even more. Yes. This would be something to, he should have tried 18 months ago. There's too much work and too much credibility built for to be starting this now. And, and, and here's the real net net of it. Show me your body count, dude. Show me the bitches you fuck. Show me, show me, give me some, show me what you can do. Don't talk mm -hmm. about yeah. what, what the, the, the points show me and nobody can get out and show no. you can't be it. And the thing is you can't be it. So you want to try to be it online, dude, this internet muscles. 
uh, <laughs> this, is, this is what so many guys get started like, well, who do we listen to? Here's who you listen to. The guys who who actually live what they do. Why? Why do you guys who who when they first turned on me said, who's this corny ass dude in the suit? I can't relate to him. But every time you see me, I'm consistent. Right. Every time you see me, I'm saying the same shit and even begrudging you like, you know what? Fuckers got a point. I hate the listen. I hate the motherfucker, but he's got a point. And and, and if and if it's going to help me increase my outcomes, great. Tell me, Shaq wouldn't have wanted to get better at free throws if he could. Right. Of course, he just didn't want to. That's why he never got better. And that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like you know somebody said, well, indirect game versus that. Look, dude, does it work for getting you the outcome you want, right. or do you want any outcome? Some guys, honestly, think about it. Um, Jason Black, I know you probably don't watch him, but I need to watch this broadcast. He talked about men in particular, black men in particular, have been so marginalized that the internet is given an opportunity for certain guys, black, socially awkward, whatever, a chance to be heard and speak. And when they get on, they just talk. Have you ever wondered why a guy could run, how you could run a three hour live stream and have 20, uh, 20 views and you do it month in a month, a, a week in a week out? 1200 video dude th and i and, and i and here's the thing not that i not that i would do what he would do not that what he's doing is right but i guess this is kind of his hail mary he's been at this forever he's yeah got, dude he's got he's got 12 he's got over 1200 videos and this nigga gets on and he just talks shit for three hours and he's not getting anywhere. He so argue with a troll go to where the he, yeah so he says you know what i'm gonna go to where the action is and I'm going to I'm going to troll guys it, like he thinks he, he thinks he can he can he can light a match in that way. There's just one problem. You fucking blow, man. Like you suck. Like it would be one thing if you were putting out good content, but you don't have receipts of good content. If you're good, people know and understand that you are good. Th this well, is all there is to it. Well, it's kind of hard to look at a guy who's who. <laughs> I mean, okay. He looks like he does. You look, you look like you do, and you want to talk about what? This no, no, no. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah, no. you can't do that. <laughs> definitely, definitely not going to happen. Um, you guys are listening to TSR Live with Donovan Sharp. I'm here with special guest Kevin Samuels, asking the question: Should men dress to impress women? Eddie in the chat says, "I never dress." do or do anything for women except brush my teeth listen eddie i appreciate you commenting but you're not you're being dishonest like i know you would like to think that right i know you would like to think that you don't do anything for women but subconsciously you do right it's, it's a I'm selfish gene theory specifically for women like okay if i do this is, is that going to impress women but saying things like i don't do anything for women women except brush my teeth that's being intellectually dishonest because we all, again, women are always on our mind. This is why we do it's what we do. Okay, dude, is this your Eddie? Eddie in? Is this your picture in your avatar? Uh, is that your picture in your avatar with, you know, all the muscles and everything? Yeah, Eddie, uh, if you would answer the question. Um, I mean, if that if that's your picture, this guy in the avatar has, he looks like a bodybuilder. Right. You're standing on stage. I'm assuming you can compete. You cannot lie about this point. Right. Right. You, I right. mean, but your avatar is a complete, op completely destroys your, your our whole argument. That's exactly right. So now, now, now this isn't to say, see, here's the thing. And, and I want to make this clear. This isn't to say that if he is a bodybuilder, and I doubt that he is, because if he were a bodybuilder, he wouldn't be watching a live stream about fashion advice. Right. You know, 615 Eastern. Your ass would probably be somewhere in a gym. But assuming that he really is a bodybuilder, yeah, listen, nobody gets into bodybuilding and, do, and does bodybuilding contests specifically for women. But guess what? You understand that that is a fringe benefit. Exactly. That, that, that is on your mind. Listen, you listen, you don't put pictures of yourself as a bodybuilder on social media uh, because, you know, uh, you're not you're doing that for women. Right. Guys don't give a fuck what you look like. Oh, you know, cool fucking uh, cool fucking biceps, bro. No, that's not what you're doing that for. And that's OK. Right. Like, li listen, girls like big muscles. Girls like guys who are in great shape. Yeah, I was a skinny fuck for the longest. And when I finally when I was sick, but when I 
got over what was bothering me. I'm a cancer survivor. I was in the gym four hours a day, four days a week. The first time I actually put on some real muscle and I had some pecs and some traps and triceps, I I experienced something I had never experienced before in my life. Women drooling over me when I took my shirt off because I actually had a chest and I was like, God damn, you don't think that was motivation to go in there and pump more weight? You got damn right because it's hardwired into us. Look, dude, Disdain the things you cannot have. One of the thir- law number 36 of the 48 laws of power. Disdain the things you cannot have. Colloquially, we call it sour grapes. Why do most guys don't worry about their image? Because they don't know how to fucking do it. Right. So one of the best ways to say it's not important. It, well, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't look any better. So it's not important. Fuck you. Yeah, it is. Right. No, I I, I agree. And Rob makes a, he makes another great comment. He says men like nice cars because women like nice cars. Now, that isn't to say that a guy goes out and buys a car specifically to impress girls. Right. Some right. guys just like the way like like I sold Audis when I was ni- the when I, the I don't even remember the year when I was 19 and 20 years old. The summers between my the summers between my sophomore and junior year. I sold Audi automobiles and I fell in love with the I do German engineering and all that stuff. Yeah, bro. And I, I've always just loved the Audi automobile. But when I was out there buying and driving Audis, I drove them because I liked them. But guess what? The secondary reason was like, you know what? Girls like Audis. So when I'm rolling around Las Vegas in my, you know, in my fully loaded Audi A5, which was completely paid for, by the way, I paid for it in full as a 2012. Mm-hmm. Audi A5, yeah. I knew that I was going to get the ooze and the ahs. Did I like the Audi vehicle? Absolutely. I made myself my own mental point of origin. I bought that vehicle for me, but I knew that a fringe benefit of driving a car that looked like that would be more female attention, and that's okay. It's it's not a crime to admit that part of the reason you do things is for female attention. Dude, you just said the key point, the fringe benefit for you. There you go. That's what I say. There's no downside to a man being the best version of himself for himself. Yes. And see, that's where this got this where a lot of guys get twisted. And I really feel like it's because I've been through red pill rage. Oh, God. Okay. With the, the when you're raging, you, 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 you're not clear, but when you can get out of red pill rage and you can accept, you can accept the world for what it is. Then you are a hell of a lot more level head to say, you know what? There is an advantage for me getting in the gym, putting on some functional muscle, being an athlete for life, for my life. I don't have to be a professional bodybuilder, but I do need to have some strength because, hey, I like to be able to do stuff and it does look better. I like it. You right. you asked me about a, a, a leather jacket and I showed you the leather jacket that I knew would resonate with Donovan. That would make Donovan's dick hard. And that's hard to do because Donovan is a simple minimalist guy. That's but right. there is a leather jacket out there that he would look at and say, God damn, that's a motherfucking Donovan Sharp leather jacket. That shit was dope for real, man. And it wasn't dope because of a bitch. It was dope because you thought it was dope for you. Right, right, right. And dude, man, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So right. one of the one of the first things I do, and shout out to Donnell, he's a former client. When I work with somebody, you guys see me in the happy go lucky videos, but when I work with you, I'm a coach. Right. And one of the first things I tell my guys is we got to get brutally honest about who you are, where you are, and then where you want to get to. Right. Understand how long that, how far that is, and then put the work in. There you go. No different than you go back and see the 312, 20 pound Donovan Sharp. 12, versus, man. Good memory. Versus, versus the Adonis he is now. There was a fucking chasm between there and here. But there was a, some point in time where Donovan had to say, This is what the fuck I am. No matter how I got here, no matter what, if I want this, I'm going to have to do some things. I'm going to have to improve my diet, drink some water, yes. do some resistance training, uh, do some cardiovascular. I'm going to have to do all these things, and I'm going to have to be consistent. It's going to have to be a lifestyle change yes. because even if I get it, I have to maintain it. So what has to happen? I have to find something that's going to work. Donovan had to find something that's going to work in Donovan's life, but then dropping all that weight. Your knees aren't as jacked up. Your back is, and you don't have to worry about all these other things that internally or externally. Now, the side benefit is bitches love it. Right. Dude, dudes admire it, but he did it for him. 
So you cannot tell me that if you're sitting out there and you're 300 some odd pounds, you wouldn't want to have the result Donovan had. But are you ready to do the goddamn work? See, that work is harder than the work I'm talking about right now. Right. Let me tell you something. Every guy can simply be sexier just like that in two seconds. By Boom. spraying yep. on a goddamn right. cologne. That's it. A woman's nose. You don't need to know why. Stop asking why. Right. That's the number one question. <laughs> Stop fucking asking why and just do what the teacher tells you. When right. I was in Kung Fu, Daniel son, Karate Kid, wax on, wax off, sand the floor. Don't ask why you sand the floor. Go, go fucking wax the cars. If I tell you to wear a cologne, because it, I need to know why. Do you right. believe I know what I'm talking about? Then if I do, go do what I say. Go do what I say and then go see the results for yourself because there was no argument that you can make to me that you can't see for yourself after 30 days of wearing a cologne consistently. You know what? It's it's interesting that you say that. Uh, I had Steve the Dean Williams on the show last night. We talked about um, uh, we were asking, will sex dolls ever replace women? And we we kind of got we kind of got off on a tangent because a lot of guys they say this, they say this about Steve. They also say this about Rolla Tomasi. They say, Steve, you know, you're a married guy. You view you view uh, the game through the you know through a marriage lens. Rolla Tomasi, you tell us not to get married, but you're married. You're a hypocrite. And you know, it's interesting, Steve. The way Steve talked, and, and I love the way he addressed it. He said, "That's what's wrong with you guys. Mm -hmm. Is you guys are you guys are so busy worrying about the quote your qualifications mm -hmm. and worried about the messenger, but not really, but not really worrying about the message, right? And a lot of guys say, hey, you know, and, and I, see, here's the thing: no one has ever. There was one guy who actually did. His name is Bruno D. And I had to ban his ass from the channel because he talks he talks too goddamn much. He thinks he's got everything figured out. Uh, he's one of these. He's one of these." Um, uh, one of these new red pill guys who thinks he's got it all figured out. Bitches ain't shit. I'm never going to do this. I'm always going to do that. Uh, he's probably a young guy. But you should bring back cage matches. A lot of these just oh got need their ass whooped. This, oh. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, man. But of course, you know, uh, anonymity always, you know, makes people a little bit bolder. But he said to me, he, 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 he's the only person who has ever said, Donovan, like I would never cohabitate with a woman, blah, 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 blah. But you know what you're talking about. So if, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing, uh, Kevin, I don't, it, it, when, when a guy said, when a guy asks me, Hey, uh, should I cohabitate with this woman? Dude, fuck no. And Eric code five, seven, one and seven Oh two. I see you guys in the queue. I'm going to get to you guys in a second. I tell them, fuck no. And they always say, why you do it. Nigga, you ain't, you ain't me. me. You like ain't you're not me. Right. Well, I could be you. Well, it, oh, okay. Well, there you go. Right. So now, now you're starting to think, and and the thing is, this is, and, and again, this isn't to say that I'm any better or worse than anybody out there. There you but are. I've been, but I've been in the game for, I've been in there the game. There you are. I'll say, like, it. I'll say it. He is. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I've I, been in the game for, I've been in the game for so long, man. And dude, I could tell you, oh my God, I can tell you stories for decades, man. But I've been, I've been in the game. For let me, so let me, let me just, let me stop you right here. Let me just ask <laughs> you this. How old are you? 41. Think back to when you were a, a, a tot, when you were in your teens or your 20s. Okay. We grew up in a time to where men who were older than us, who had lived through some stuff, we gave them at least the benefit of doubt and respect for saying, you know what? They know some shit. Right. This generation doesn't. They think because th this is one of the beauties and curses of the internet because so many youngsters, 20s and you know, millennials were put into the boardrooms and on the, into companies because a lot of the people didn't grow up with computers and technology. You've thrust a lot of men into positions to where their word actually matters. You're telling a, a dude to saying, I could be you. Fucker, you got 20 plus years in this. <laughs> Application. Right. This is what I tell dickheads like that. Okay, I got three black belts. Let me do, I'll do you this. I'll oh. give you the entire, I'll give you every one of the forms and everything I learned. You go binge watch this stuff for six months. Then let's get in the ring. 
Right. We'll go, we'll go six rounds, three minute rounds. I won't even I won't even swing for the first two minutes and 45 seconds. I will only punch the first the last 50 punch or kick the last 15 seconds. Right. You get two. You get almost three minutes at I'm me. Give you a head start. And here's what will happen. He don't even have to win to, to fight me. Right. He'll punch himself out. Right. And see, this is what a lot. I said it laughingly. And this is one of the things I love that I know I can fight. I can fight very well. I used right. to be a bouncer. I used to fight full contact. I love the taste of my own blood. A lot of these dudes just need a fucking ass whooping. <laughs> I agree, man. Because I to agree. sit around and talk and say, well, you don't know something. There is a pecking order. There is a pecking order with men. We keep score by pussy and money. That's right. It Power is, it, in its simplest form, is the ability to influence people. And we need image and access. And guys who are warriors, veterans, generals, you don't have any 20 year old generals in the military. Oh, hell no. You can't Why? be the, in the United States unless you're at least 35 years old. Why? You can't, you can't get out there. You're telling me to do these maneuvers. That... Why? Well, because they have the experience, the wisdom. I'll, I'll say this and I'll leave the movie, the, the movie colors. Ah, there's a son bull and a father bull sitting right. on the hill, looking over a field of cows. Father Bull says, all those cows down there are ours. The son says, Dad, let's run down and fuck one of them. Father says, no, son, let's walk down. Fuck them all. You youngsters need to understand something. 40 years old is the dopest age for yes, a man. Sir. I'm telling you. You can still bang you know, 18, 19, 20-year-olds if, if you want to, and you, can, and you get the respect of the world because you finally get to the point to where you know who you are and you accept it. You can do this. You can't do that. And it's okay. Your dick is X long. It's okay. Right. You, you, you speak. The, it's okay. But you are good in your lane. I, if you can tell me a hundred percent to anyone who wants to detract from what Donovan says or anybody that you are good in your lane, I'm right. going to call you on your bullshit because if you really, really are good in your lane, you're not detracting. You're not here. Okay, that makes sense. And I try and, and it's funny because I know that this is a weakness of mine, right? And you know, I know that some guys some guys ask honest questions. Hey, well, I've heard some guys say this. What about that? And then I'll explain it. But every once in a while, man, we get guys in the chat who who when they say something, it would appear that they think that they know more than I do. And listen, if that's what you think, that's fine. But I would advise you to start your own platform. If you right. really do know more than I do, then hey, get your own show. Like you're 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 missing your calling. But I'm not gonna put up with guy and 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 don't get me wrong. Like I'm not I'm open to having my mind changed, right? I can certainly admit when I'm dude, I've called people out in the chat. They call up and they say, Hey, listen, Donovan, this isn't what I meant. And I'll say, All right, hey, listen, you explained it. I'm a hot headed guy, you explained it, it's all good. But again, if 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 you're going to act like you know more, and listen, I don't pretend to act like I know more than Rolla Tomasi. The guy's 50 years old. He's the godfather of the manosphere. I just think that I just think that more men have to understand that that life has its stages. It, it really does have its stages. And maybe this guy, Bruno D, maybe when he gets to be my age after having been in the game as long as I have, maybe he's maybe he says, you know what? You know, hi, diddly D. It's the player's life for me. I'm going to I'm going to fuck until I die. But I mean, listen, man, like your priorities changed and well, my priorities changed, dude. I fucked every nine and 10 on the fucking planet. I've been in the back of so many goddamn straight. Listen, it was a great life, mm -hmm. but now I'm transitioning. And if I still live that Vegas life, I could not have or do what I'm doing now. Um, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, Kevin, this is Donovan uh, Sharp in the bottle, by the way. Donovan Sharp, this is your cologne. Black Af What's that say? Black Afghano? Black Afghano. This is a uh, incense and weed and this other one right here is called smoke for the soul this is one of the best cannabis fragrances these are leather incense uh and bad decisions kind of fragrances wow these are, this is another one yeah so i'm i need to send you a, burp, a christmas present if anybody knows fragrances, which one do you think Donovan like, Black Afghano or Duro? I think it would be this one. Though. Okay, yeah, uh, three of Kevin's, three of Kevin's, three hundred and twenty-eight thousand fragrances. We got the phone line set up. <laughs> Let's go to area code five seven one. You're on live with Kevin and Donovan. Go ahead. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, perfect. Hey Donovan, um, 
I work from home and I'm actually meeting up with the girl for coffee afterwards. So I don't really want to dress up, but after hearing you guys talk, I think I'm going to dress up. I'm here in Denver and it's 30 degrees. Any recommendation? What should I wear? Kevin. Yes. Um, how old are you and how old is she? I'm 35. She's 32. Uh, how hot is she? Honestly. Um, honestly, I would say she's probably like a seven. Okay. That means, that means she's probably a six. Right. And where are you, where are you meeting her? I'm meeting at a coffee shop, which is like Stapleton, about 20 minutes from my place. Oh, sorry, 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, uh, and lastly, uh, what is the temperature? What's the relative? What is the, is it going to be in the sixties, the forties, the thirties? The, what? what? It's 30 degrees here in Denver. 30 degrees. Okay. So this is perfect. This is perfect weather for some jeans, whether they're black or some dark blue jeans. Do you have any kind of boots like uh, Chelsea boots, Chucka boots, anything like that? Yeah. If you, okay. It would be a perfect time to wear this is perfect jeans, t shirt, perfect jeans, uh, turtleneck, and boot weather. Kind of like what I'm wearing right now. Can you see? Huh? Well, I don't have a turtleneck, but I'll try to find something else. Okay. If you don't have a turtleneck, do you have a, do you have a, what, do you have a, okay. If you don't have a turtleneck, do you have a black V neck uh, sweater? Uh, Yeah, I do. Okay. A black V neck sweater. Hopefully it fits. Um, Put on some, just some cool jeans and put on your boots and throw on a coat. And do you, do you have any cologne? Uh, yes, I do. What kind? Uh, I usually just, I'm kind of basic, I guess. I usually go with pol- uh, polo blue. Polo blue? Work fine. As long as you got something on. Spray it on both sides of your neck, one at the bottom of the chest and one on the back side of each hand. Make sure that your clothes fit. Put a nice little, knock the dust off your shoes. Throw on a cool jacket and you will be appropriate for the coffee shop. Guys, what I basically just gave him is a uniform that every guy can wear. You want to know what the you want, want to know what it is? It's the black turtleneck or the black V-neck cashmere or merino wool sweater, a must have for every guy no matter what age. Denim, dress denim. If you don't have uh dress denim, you can always just throw on some slacks like that. Okay. Um a simple pair of boots. Chelsea boots are great. Now, understand, I got 50 million boots. Yep. Uh, boots are always good because uh, they take, they just they just look sexy to women. Trust me. Boots make women moist. Um, <laughs> cologne. Cologne mantles so much more to women than you ever really know. Their sense of smell is heightened. Um, and if you just throw in a cool jacket, he just has the basic template. Right. And, he's, and, and, and it's no different than jeans, T-shirt, and tennis shoes. All he's doing is change the tennis shoes for boots, the T-shirt for a Moreno wool sweater. That's it. Unbelievable. Now, what Kevin just did, it, it's funny. The guy, and it, it's, it's just unbelievable. This is why Kevin is so good at what he does, right? So the guy calls up and he says, listen, I've got a coffee date. What should I wear? Okay. So I had no idea that Kevin was going to... Kevin asked very relevant questions. So anytime you're about to go out on a date or a meetup with a woman. I never thought in a million years about your age compared to her age, how hot, what, what the, what the temp and what the temperature is. Mm-hmm. But Kevin broke it all the way down. Like these things matter. Those things matter. And get this, this guy is going to look good with what he has in his closet. He didn't have to go out and get anything fancy. He nope. didn't go out and spend a hundred bucks on an outfit. All Kevin literally just dressed this guy from head to toe, including the cologne and now and now he's going to increase his he's going to increase this guy's odds of fucking this girl man so if he gets a pregnant kevin you're going to be on the hook for a little bit of that child support use a use a condom use a condom for sure <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to the phone lines area code 702 you're on live with donovan and kevin go ahead hey, DC, hear me? yes sir yep hey, uh, in Las Vegas. hey what's up man how you doing you sound a little sick man 
Yeah, I'm getting over it. But I had to call in because Kay Sam is here. Shout out to Kevin Sam as well. Later. I really love your stuff. Thank you for that. You know, got a lot of fashion things. It's, you know, um, just listening to uh, two things. I just want to say that I'll jump. The first thing is uh, the way Kay Sam was like, you talk about how guys <laughs> resist upgrading their wardrobe. Actually, had a lot of parallels, Donovan, to a lot of excuses that guys make to go into the gym. Okay. Where it's like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. Oh, I don't need to get to the gym. Just something that I kind of noticed. You get what I'm saying? When you lift, right? When you lift heavy weights or whatever, the next thing you, they kind of go hand in hand because once you have this nice body, you need to dress nice. You know, if you really want to elevate your game, especially in Vegas, dude, you know, oh, yeah. by the way, you just can't, unless you have tons of, unless you're known, unless you're known quantity of money. Oh, yeah, 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 you, you, yeah, you, 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 listen, you gotta, your, your thread game has to be on point if you live in Vegas, for sure. Yeah, no first doubt. thing I thought of. So, yeah, so exactly, so I, that's one thing I learned, too. I actually have a tailored suit for work, and, it, and it's just great, uh, Kevin. It was just, it was absolutely fantastic. I have, like, a nice tailored suit. It's not the most mm-hmm. expensive, but it just fits It's a game changer, so well. though, right? I'm a big I'm a big guy too, so they did the shoulders and everything too, according to my waist and everything. Just looks great. I always get complimented. It puts me ahead of my uh, uh, my fellow colleagues too. Mm-hmm. One that I just kind of noticed that a lot of guys they don't want to take the time out to figure out how to dress up and what makes them look good. And I think there's a lot of parallels to lifting. Also, the last thing I just want to point out, Kevin, because you uh, on, on the last time you appeared on Donovan, you mentioned something about how. I guess in the American in the American context, you know, once a once a guy kind of hits that thirty five, forty five ish age, it's it's kind of standard fare for them to go grandpa, you know, to go from young young bad boy to grandpa. Mm-hmm. I almost kind of almost kind of felt like the older you get, it's almost more relevant to appear how you look. You get what I'm saying? Especially if you want to convey like your success and your status. I'm not saying you know attract the gold diggers because you know what I'm saying discovery trumps disclosure. Of course, but I almost feel like I almost feel like you know. When you get older, because I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm still relatively young, but you know, what I'm, I'm still, I'm thinking long term. It's just that you have to look, you have to, not only just, I have to be on point, of course, but you also have to dress well too. It's because you really want to convey that. Because you know, I think the older you get, it, it's kind of, you know, I just expected of you to be looking presentable and at least, at least know how to. Look. Well, you you need to be dressed like a man. Go ahead. Okay, so so and this is a. This is part of the problem with so many guys not being raised with the father. We value youth and we don't we don't see the advantage of going from our 20s to our 30s to our 40s to our 50s to our 60s. We're looking at it as, damn, I'm old and it's over versus it's something to look forward to. I'm going to do a video next week talking about the gray fox. Do you notice that I, I rock my gray beard more than I did at the beginning of the year? I used to I used to put Beijing and stuff. Man, I just let it out because. There is there is a sexiness that comes along with having that fucking George Clooney salt and pepper gray. Right. Women cream themselves. And the difference between um, dressing in your 20s where you may be able to take a little bit of advance, uh, uh, advantage of some of the fa- fashions, Yeezys and all that other kind of stuff. When you're dressing, like I say, Idris Elba, sexiest man alive, he's in his 40s. David Beckham. He's in his, uh, should be in his 40s. Yeah, I think he's in his late 30s. I don't know. Late 30s, late 30s. But the point is, it's just classic masculine fashion. Even if you want to just cross the cross into the genre, go to Jay-Z. He's in Tom Ford. Classic, simple, masculine fashion. Solid colors. The main thing is fit, and fit is great. It's no different then in your 20s, in your teens, in your 20s, you were drinking the cheapest beer, the cheapest wine. You were just out to get oh, no. fucked up. But when you're in your 40s, you like a nice McAllen 18 or McAllen 25. You're, you're, you're smoking a nice Cuban cigar or Padron Anniversario with the Maduro wrapper. You're not just eating, you know, uh, what is it, the cheapest steak. You go get your nice prime rib or, or a filet. You, there is, there is, look, dude, you need to be living better. So any bitch that comes around you, her advantage is not only does she get to fuck you, she gets to be around your life. You're eating well, drinking well, living well, riding well, because that's what's good for you. 
You ain't got to spend a goddamn dime on her. You want to Netflix and chill? It's better than Netflix and chill with you because you're sipping on some whatever you like because it's what you like, whether you're a wine drinker. Look, dude, this is what men used to do. Mad men kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. That is why that show resonated because men were doing man stuff. That's now those dudes in there, you don't the 20 year old, the youngsters, but who was getting all ass? Roger fucking Sterling. Yes. Dan uh uh Don Dan Draper. Don Draper. And by the way, Roger Sterling wore these glasses. Don Draper. That's what you that's what we do as men. So when the young cats look and see me like, damn, we we young Thundercats, but I want to be like that when I get old. Right, right. That's exactly right. Very good point. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Area code eight six five. You're on live with Donovan and Kevin. Go ahead. Hey, uh, I just want to make a comment. Yep. And that's regarding cologne. Okay. So I've been wearing the same cologne for uh, almost twenty years now, and uh, it's. I'm gonna give my secret out. I normally don't give it out. All girls want to know what it is. It's so rare. They they don't. They're not familiar with it. At least down here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. And it's uh, it's Issey Miyake, the original. Y'all familiar with that one? I just did a video on Issey Miyake, Nora Umbri. Yeah, yeah. Issey Miyake well, came out in 1995, and it was revolutionary to the market. Uh, the original Issey works just. It's one of the most popular, uh, one of the one of the best original fragrances to come out in the 90s. Um, and it will always work. It, it's up there with uh, Aqua Di Gio. Um, yeah, it, it, you just can't be clean, fresh and it's, and it, and it has a masculine tinge to it always works. Well, the thing about Aqua to Geo is like, it's so common, you know, you get in an elevator sometimes and you know, there's two dudes wearing Aqua to Geo, you know, it's just, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. I want to have something different. I want the girl to be like, I don't know what this scent is. What is your scent? You make I, I will say it. I will say it this. It's common. It's common for guys who wear cologne. You got to remember 90 plus percent of people don't wear anything. Right. So what, what was your next question? I wear it daily. Yeah, yeah. What was your next question? About when you spray your when, when you spritz the cologne, you spritz it on the back of your hand. You mean the tops of your hand? Uh, yes, because of this time of year. Um, you want to apply the pulse points when possible, both sides of the neck, base of the throat. Um, I don't like to apply the clothes. But then like when it's in the warmer months and your your wrists are exposed, you can apply there. But typically this time of year, it's cooler. So your wrists are going to be covered. So I apply on the back of my hands yeah. because as you talk and walk and move, it'll catch. Uh, and that's just for that's for daily application. If you were actually going to go out in the evening, I actually apply to each shoulder and on the back of my neck. So when I walk by someone, it'll catch them on the shoulder. When I walk by, it'll leave a little flavor trail. Um, it's all about application for fragrance, If you, especially if you're a fragrance wearer. And I would say if you wear Issey Miyake all the time, uh, you might want to consider putting something that counterbalances that uh, for the evenings because that's a really bright, fresh fragrance. But something like a Dolce Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum, that will be a a nice uh, add-on or something like Spice Bomb Extreme. It's completely on the other end of the spectrum, and it gives you something where in the cooler months and at for date time for dates and special occasions. Uh, quick question here from uh, Miami J in the chat. He wants to know if there are any fragrances out there that are good for smokers. Smokers, yes. Uh, some of the things I just uh, lined out for Donovan: things that have heavy incense, leather. <laughs> Um, are, are going to be good. I tell you. Now we talk about cigarette smokers, cigar smoker, or smoker smokers. Uh, let's say now cigarette smokers are going to be a little bit different. Um, but tobacco fragrances, like our sponsor, 1821 Man Made Sweet hey, Tobacco Spirit, cool. is an exceptional fragrance. Which is like, honestly, I think 1821 Man Made is the one fragrance every guy should own because it is universal. Yep. It's it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's tobacco. It's manly. It's not overdone. They got beer products. I'm actually I've used their hairspray when I yeah that's a great fragrance. Yep. So anything with tobacco in it, like 1821 Man Made, uh, would be good. Things with uh that may have a honey kind of thing in it. Um, but you, you just can't go wrong with 1821. Okay. Um, that 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 would be what I would say, um, and he's and if you're down in Miami, you can actually still get away with it because it's not overly sweet. 
Good. Very good. Let's go back to the phone lines. I think this is Fitness for Life in Erico 205. Am I right? What he asked about. What what's is your... How you doing? Hey, what's up, how man? How you doing? How's it going? Good. What's going on? I, 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 I want to get you guys' opinion. I think one of the big problems guys have, you guys are OG. We, we out here, we can't be you, but we can get tips to improve. And I think guys are jealous because so they want to shoot bullet holes. And I kind of want to get your opinion because, you know, you guys have put in the work. And I think, Kevin, you mentioned when you was, you know, giving an example of Donovan, you're talking about 20 plus years. So I'm not mm -hmm. trying to call in and tell you my experiences. I'm trying to keep my mouth shut and learn. Sure. And I think that's a problem with a lot of the people that's listening. Hmm. Yeah. What do you think about that, Kevin? That's uh, that. that. And again, he he makes a. He, he makes a very good point. He, he, he thinks that a lot of these young guys or a lot of guys that don't have as much experience are envious. Okay. And because they're envious, they, they want to, they want to shoot holes. They want to shoot holes or, 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 or maybe point out perceived holes in perceptions. One way that a lot of guys like to, like to, uh, like to do this is they like to, they like to say, well, this guy said this, but you're saying that, right? Or that guy said that, you said this. So obviously you guys are not, a, in other words, somebody's wrong. That, that, that's, we actually had one guy call in um, yesterday and he was, I mean, he was, and listen, Alpha Male Strategies, dude, he's probably, he's the most successful black YouTuber, I think, probably of all time. I don't know. I'm sure there are others out there. But as far as the dating game is concerned, like this guy has got it. Like this guy is making money. Honestly, he's probably making twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month. That's not an exaggeration, guys. This guy is totally out of go because he knows his shit. But what but what a lot of guys try to do is they try to say, well, Rollo Tomasi said this, Donovan Sharp said that, Alpha Male Strategy said this, and Richard Cooper said that. So mm -hmm you know surprise surprise they're all talking they're all talking you know and i I had, to, I had to say yesterday on the air there's more than one way to skin a cat yes like you don't like like there's more than one way to red pill what are your thoughts on guys what, what do you think about the caller's comment that a lot of young guys are jealous or a lot of guys that haven't been in been in the game as long are envious and try to shoot holes in what we talk about well i think it's 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 first off i always ask the question ask them what does your dad say and okay. then typically it's quiet and that that answers a lot of, because most don't have dads there you go um so what you find is so many younger guys they're not necessarily as jealous as they're really trying to almost seek male approval yeah uh, it's like you know it's like um when you when you when you around so many women you're raised by your mom you go to school and your teachers are female the the place you really first encounter men is if you play sports or in the real world so you learn how to deal with women you know that jealousy thing which is much more of a matriarchal trait someone said there in the chat room you get on the panel with men and you're basically trying to say i don't listen to what they saying what i'm listening i'm a man too i'm a man too i'm yeah. a man too that's what i hear I never, I'm a man too. I'm like, yeah, you're 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 a male, but you're not a man yet. Wow. See? And and, and I, I that's why I I'm not as hard on millennials as I was because I I have empathy. I coach millennials uh, in corporate image consulting. A lot of companies are sending their employees back to learn soft skills because so many of the millennial employees are great on paper, but their social skills, in particular, men are having a tremendous problem integrating into the work world. Right. Uh, and that's across all races. Now, the second part of it, the second question, the second part of the question was what? Um, it was the envy piece of it. And then. Oh, yeah. He, th he thinks it's uh, he thinks it's envy. Well, not only does he think it's envy, um, he specifically talked about the young guys. Right. Oh, it, 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 there was also something about, you know, the who's right. Yes, right, exactly. Okay. You said so, this and you said that, right. Okay, so the first thing I would ask is, how do you get to Las Vegas? I'll ask the person, how do you get to Las Vegas? And I would make them tell me. Right. Yeah, there's a hundred different ways to get to Vegas. But your destination's always the same. Yeah. Alan Roger Curry talks about mode one. Mode one is great for, for I, I everybody can be better at verbal seduction. You, there's well, just no downside to dirty talking, but you tell me, but I tell you mode one is really great when you're on a short, on a vacation, you don't have time to do any, anything. Mode one is going to be like a, uh, you're, you're, you're up by 
five touchdowns, you're going to run the ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, so this is that's mode one. When you're out of town, fuck, it's mode one. Right. Now, when you have opportunity, but my, I look at it this way. You need to think of game like Batman and a utility belt. You want to be able to pull it all out. Right. Use what you want. That's the problem. Guys are looking for a silver bullet, an easy path, a quick fix. Okay. So it's like, well, if I go get what Alpha Male Strategies gives me, well, yeah, but is that a complete art? Like a martial art? Like I'm, I'm a martial artist. I do a complete style and it takes nine years to get a black belt. You can get a black belt in Taekwondo in under 18 months, 24 months, wow. but there, but it doesn't use as merely any as many weapons. It's not a grappling style. It's an art of kicking and punching. The end of the day is, are you trying to actually become a better man for life? Or are you just trying to get a quick fix? And so many guys get found out they're trying to get a quick fix. And we go back to the 312 pound Donovan to the guy you are now. They'd have lost the weight. They'd have, they'd have got a bitch or two or something. And then they'd have got comfortable and blew the fuck back up. <laughs> and then they'd end up simping again. You know, you know, they wouldn't be as manly. They'd end up getting... The chick would end up fucking over and break up with him. Then they'd be back out here in the game, 260 pounds, 270 pounds, and having to do the shit over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah, listen, I agree with you. Um, and, and, and you know, it's interesting because I, I, I never really thought of it that way. You know what you just pointed out. Hey, look, look, I'm a man too. I'm a man too. And I think when guys just, I think when guys are just adversarial and just non-agreeable with other men who are talking about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I think what they're trying to say, I think they're actually giving you credit. Mm -hmm. right? Like they wouldn't like the only reason why they disagree with you. It, the, the only reason why they outwardly disagree with you is because they know you're onto something and they want to say, okay, he knows what he's talking about, but I want to show you that I know what I'm talking about too. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have people who are just on some nigga bullshit mm -hmm. because again, listen on the, and you, dude, me and Steve, the Dean talk about this all the time on the black side of YouTube, the black side of YouTube is largely, uh, it, it, well, the black side of YouTube in terms of red pill content, a lot of that is blood sport. So this, 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 somebody's beefing with that person or whatever, whatever the case may be. Kevin, it's the same in the hip hop world, right? Uh, dude, yeah. Bill and Safari Samuels, Drake versus whoever Drake's always beefing with somebody Nas versus Jay Z. Mm -hmm. like, black people love to, for whatever reason, they love to just see the cage match. They love to see the, you know, the, 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 and listen, Hey, listen, if, if that's what they want, Hey, that's fine with me, but that's not the arena. That's not the arena that I play in. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not where I excel. I'm not, I'm not about to go. I'm not about to go toe to toe with someone that I'm not physically there with. If mm -hmm. you want, if we want to have, if you want to have beef and we're face to face with them, yeah, then we can throw hands. That's the way you do beef. But making a YouTube video here and then making a YouTube video there, like every once in a while, I'll get a troll who will come in and say, well, alpha male strategy says this. He just, you know, he disagrees with you. What do you say about that? What are you talking about? Just like you said, there's more than one way to get to Vegas. And I think a lot of guys who try to sort of spark those flames, I think those are guys not only, not only that, not only are they trying to tear us down, in other words, I think that I think they're envious of, of the things that we have and the things that we build. And listen, we're talking about 1% of our viewership. Dude, 99% of the guys out there, they're here to learn something. They give credence to what we talk about. But every once in a while, man, you'll see people in the chat or in your comments that, you know, that are on some that, like I said, that are on some nigga bullshit. And it, it just gets old. It's, it's the content creator version of shit test. There you go. You know, and if somebody somebody says, you know, alpha male strategies disagrees with you, really tell me what exactly said about me. Right. Well, right. and what it is is he didn't disagree with you. You interpret what he said as a dis as conflict. And okay. and then I bet you asked him directly, you disagree with what Donovan said. No, man, Donovan shit's right. And my shit's right too. The mm -hmm. difference is he has enough experience to know when to use an arrow, when to use a knife, when to use uh a gun, when to use a bow. I mean, and these dudes don't. And that's the thing. Young guys really would do themselves a, a favor. I, I made a video. Uh, it's there right now and it's on Patreon. Okay. Stop asking questions. Start searching. I get so tired when people go to my comment section. Hey, man, I love this video. Have you ever made a, a video on this fragrance? I'm like, fucker, I got almost a thousand videos. Did you look in the library? <laughs> you would sit rather sit and write a three paragraph thing and think I'm going to stop and answer you versus going to look for yourself. 
Um, so I just basically said, you know what? A lot of these guys weren't taught. They what they're really looking for is truthfully. Attention. You're like you're like the you're like their big you're like their uncle. I'm like Donovan. I tell my guys this. I am not your dad. I'm like your cool uncle, or even better. You're like in the ninth or tenth grade in high school, and I'm like your cooler older brother that came home for the holidays. I'm go. a sophomore, junior in college. I take you with me and my boys, and we go out drinking, and we go out with the sorority girls, and the girls love me, and they're like, "This is your little brother, Kevin. Oh, he's cool." And they they're putting the titties up in your face, and we give you a little beer if you want a little, you know, a little weed or whatever. I'm fucking her, and she got her friend, and she's fucking you because you're my little brother. I put you up on game. You love the shit out of me. You. Of be like my brother is the shit, man. Oh, and then you go back to high school, and your friends are like, man, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and I got new Fortnite. You like my? I just did a two. I did a threesome with these two sorority chicks because my brother came by and we had pizza afterwards. Like, man, I want to be with you. I want your brother. That's who we are. There you go. Wow, I could not have put that any better myself, man. Very, very well said. We're not. Well, listen, we're not your grandfather. We're not your father. We're not your uncle. We're your cool older brother. We're gonna take one last phone call. Uh, for the evening, area code 571. Let You're me say, Donovan and Kevin. Let me say one thing before the caller starts. Oh, yeah, Guys, but, you see what I just did with the? I just threw a scarf on. Yeah, dude. Yeah, hang on, 571. Yeah, dude, like I saw that you just threw that on, man. A scarf is one of the things that you can instantly throw on with any jacket you're wearing and just take your style up a couple of cool points. And th it's just a great time of year. A scarf is a tie without having to wear a tie. Damn. That's all it is. A scarf is a tie without wearing a tie, and it just brings more emphasis. Go ahead. Go ahead, 517. Kevin Sammy just has a black belt and fucking <laughs> All right, area code 571. Go ahead, man. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Donovan. I'm actually the guy who called earlier for the uh, dress code advance for my day, so I appreciate that. But I kind of wanted to call back again. Did uh, you fuck her? I also do martial arts. I want, I, no, I, I, I'm going to meet her with her in the next hour. So okay. I, right. I kind of want to ask Kevin what kind of martial arts you do. I personally do jiu-jitsu. I've been doing that for four years. I'm a blue belt, so I want to know what you do. I'm, I also am meeting uh, Jonathan from More Life Dating. He's coming from Japan to Denver. Okay. And he's been wrestling before, so we're going to go get on the mat and do some uh, Okay. The first, the, first, the first art I studied was Taekwondo. Then I uh, went to Shotokan Karate. Uh, but the, what I've been doing the last almost 15, almost 20 years now is my Zhang Lawhorn, Northern Shaolin Kung Fu, Lost Track Kung Fu. Um, the movie, The Matrix. Ah. Uh, a lot of the guys, the, the, the Yip Ping, these guys, what, what you see a lot in Hollywood, um, you just, like Jet Li, these are derivations of Lost Track Kung Fu. It's a Northern Shaolin style is the ah. close, it's, 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 it's basically... Um, it, it's, it's great for, you don't have to have as much muscle. Okay. It's, it's a circular art. It has equal amounts of kicking, punching, grappling weapons. I loved it because of the weapons. You can take a staff, a, 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 a sword, a dart, a, a knife. God damn. Anything equal, equal. Uh, it also has empty hand, open hand. You know, it's easier to kill someone with an open hand than a closed hand, and you can grapple. So, the beautiful and, and so it's one of the few arts that actually translates into MMA. I never did really MMA. I fought with some MMA fighters, some BJJ fighters, uh, but we would actually fight San Shao, which is full contact, so six ounce gloves, no foot pads to knock out. Um, and when if anybody that really does martial arts, you know, it's nothing like you see on the TV. Kung Fu is some of the dirtiest fighting you can ever do. When I was a bouncer, I was not going to kick you. I, my, if I did kick you, it would be below your knee. I would try to step in your ankle. Uh, oh. I, I would rake your eyes. I would hit you somewhere to hopefully hit, make you scream and put my thumb in your mouth and try to grab the back of your head and rip your jaw. Th this is not some shit you want to do to anybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so martial arts is something you you don't want to have to do it because you don't want to live with the consequences of what you did to somebody. Uh, and it conditions and honestly, it conditioned me to actually help me walk away more than anything else. Uh, but unfortunately, there will be times where you have to use it and you want to be as lethal and as efficient as possible. Good stuff, man. Uh, Kevin, listen, man, um, it's been a pleasure as always. OK, and I got a call coming in, too. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and cut this off now. Um, uh, buy Kevin Samuels dot com. I drop Kevin's um, uh, uh, YouTube link in the chat. Um, go to Donovan Sharp dot com for all things Donovan Sharp. Uh, in about 15 to 20 minutes, uh, I'm going to be doing the Brother Pill podcast with uh, with O'Shea Duke Jackson on his channel. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and I will see you guys next time. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it, man. Peace out, everybody. Good night.